George Washington head coach Carl Hobbs has worked recruiting wonders in his first two years and has the Colonials program on the rise. Chris Monroe, his lone senior, has amassed over 2,000 points in his career and leads a very young GW crew. Thad Mata just wins. Xavier is 21 and four and is led by two All-America candidates, senior dominator David West and junior Romain Sato. The Musketeers put the nation's third longest winning streak on the line next. the Cintas Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, the Atlantic 10 Network presents Atlantic 10 Basketball. Today, the visiting George Washington Colonials take on the 13th ranked Xavier Musketeers. Hi, everybody. Along with Tim Capshaw, I'm Dave Popkin. Today should be a real treat. Xavier is one of the dominant teams in college basketball. They're in first place in the A-10 West. And Tim, entering today's game, they're riding a 12-game winning streak. Yeah, it's been an impressive streak for Xavier. They have an unbelievable margins of victory. Look at those digits right there. But the last couple games, a little bit, a little bit tricky for them. Duquesne took them to overtime just Wednesday night, so might serve as a wake-up call. A big reason for Xavier's success this year is the senior National Player of the Year candidate, David West. David West is 6'9", can do it all on the basketball floor. Sure, he can dominate down low. He's a, he can dunk it, he can make plays, he can rebound, he can defend. But what makes him so special is his ability to make his teammates better. He's a phenomenal passer, and it's just got a great feel for the game. Those are some big-time numbers, but that's not the whole story of David West. No, and the Musketeers better keep an eye on GW's uh, Chris Monroe, the senior, is an All-American candidate. Chris Monroe is 55 points shy of the all-time scoring record at GW. He can knock it down from deep, but his real strength is his, is his power, his ability to get into the lane, finish. He goes to the foul line. For GW to win today here at Xavier, Chris Monroe is going to have to have a big, big game. Monroe's second all-time in scoring at free throws at George Washington University. It is the 13th straight sellout at the Cintas Center, and this place is rocking. We're getting set for college basketball. George Washington at Xavier. Tip-off comes your way next. Atlanta 10 Basketball is brought to you by your local Volkswagen dealers, proud to be sponsors of Atlanta 10 Basketball, and by GMAC Mortgage. Our knowledge is your power. This is Atlantic 10 basketball, 10,000 plus on hand at the sold out Cintas Center in Cincinnati. Dave Popkin and Tim Capstraw just about set for tip off of this one. Starting lineups here for GW up front, Mike Hall, Tamal Forsham, and Mensa Bonsu in the backcourt, Monroe and TJ Thompson. And the head coach of GW is Carl Hobbs. 22 and 30 in his second year has this program on the rise. Now the starters for Xavier, Romain Sato, David West, Anthony Miles up front, Lionel Chalmers back from an ankle injury, and Diedrich Finn, a super freshman, in the backcourt for Thad Mata. Check out that record, 47-10 and 10 in two years here with Xavier. <laughs> very, very impressive. Some great energy here at the Cintas Center. Place is rocking to see how these young GW players can handle the intimidation factor of the Cintas Center. Series history, last time the teams met, Xavier won by 12. Xavier dominates the all-time series, but there have been some close ones between these teams recently. And of course, Tim, they throw the ball right to you to start the game. <laughs> they know about your shooting no, prowess. No, no, let's, let's get right to the game here, partner. <laughs> Mike Hall to TJ Thompson, good-looking freshman. GW in the road gold uniform, Xavier in their home whites. A lot of motion offensively for GW. You like to get four or five guys moving around, but the defensive intensity, Xavier's one of the best in the country. They can really lock down and defend. Right here, opening possession is going to be a shot clock situation. Finn and Thompson head to head. Nine of the shot clock. Mensa Bonsu takes it to the baseline. Oh, by Off of Xavier. You don't know how many good looks you're going to get against Xavier. So when you get one, you got to take one. And you don't really, can't afford to be too, too patient. Six seconds on the clock. 
Get a down low to Mike Hall, the freshman, came up short. And one of the best rebounders in the league, Anthony Miles, cleans the glass. Going to have to make those shots if you're going to beat Xavier on the road. Nice lob to West, but a foul first on the floor. Here's David West trying to gain some position on Pop Semenso Bonsu, but he used his upper arm, he extended his hands. You can do get away with murder with your lower body, but when you extend your elbow, you get the call. That's great news for GW. They can get West in foul trouble. That was his first. Monroe, the man we talked about in the open, up top to Thompson. Yeah, that matchup of Monroe and Sato, one of the best offensive players in the Atlantic 10, heck in the country, and Sato, one of the best defensive players around. They were hanging on to Hall's jersey, but he hits it anyway. Mike Hall, the freshman out of Chicago. And multi-skilled Mike Hall, six foot eight, putting it on the deck and pulling up. Very impressive. Four double-doubles this year for Mike Hall of George Washington. Miles lost it. GW ball. Well, Xavier was sloppy the other night over at Duquesne. They got game went to overtime. Anthony Miles had to get a tip in to get it to overtime. They found a way to win. So you think they'd be coming out with major energy right now in the early going. GW doing a nice good job. Spreading them out. We're going to see the motion game. All five guys that touched the ball for GW. Come on for Sean coming off a career high in his last game against St. Bonaventure. The bank was closed that time. Yeah, not too many second shots when David West is in the game. Chalmers in his seventh game, back from an injury, hits it. Lionel Chalmers, the senior from Albany, New York High School. Offensive foul. Great job by the freshman right there. We saw a senior on one end and a freshman point guard right there, Diedrich Finn, getting terrific defensive position. Get TJ Thompson out of control. Xavier plays really with two point guards. Point guards, Lionel Chalmers and Diedrich Fenn with a full court pressure. Yeah, they'll need the two point guards with that pressure. West maybe got away with the travel. Miles on the offensive glass. He's the best in the league, but Mensa Bonsu with a couple rejections. And there he is. Pops has some hops. <laughs> How about that sequence? Now, there weren't any points right there, but this sequence, throwing it up top to Pop Mensa Bansu. Watch the athleticism here. Didn't finish it. You gotta finish it. Oftentimes, guys slam that home. They don't use the glass, but you can see some of this young athleticism at GW. Xavier likes to be patient on offense, work it, really take care of the basketball, and obviously have West as a priority, but they got a lot of weapons. There's Sato, misses from three-point range. Sato double figures in 43 of his last 47. Monroe comes up empty. Sato quickly back the other way. Nice decision by Romain Sato. Had Chalmers on the right wing, but he read the defensive situation and took it himself. That's where Sato has improved his game over the years. He's got a better, better feel for the game. He used to just be a shooter and a defender. Now he can do it all. Mensa Bonsu goes to the reverse. Again, the young athleticism. And at six foot nine on the deck, you got Hall at six eight putting on the deck. You got Mensa Bonsu. I like the way GW plays because he doesn't, Carl Hobbs doesn't put his big guys, just lock them into the post. He lets them do things. Sato off the spin. Miles. Xavier has been out rebounding people by a margin of eight in their 12 game winning streak and David West hits. Good answer by Tamal Forshan. Well, obviously GW is willing to play with Xavier. Xavier scored on one end with a David West put back and the Colonials push it on the other end. TJ Thompson with some great vision over the top to Tamal Forshan. Monroe will take a seat and Carl Hobbs goes to a bigger lineup as Dokun Akinbata checks in, a freshman out of Riverdale, Maryland. GW missed their 
free throws, and you really can't do that in a game against a favored team like this. No, no, you got to make, got to do all the little things. But when you're on the road here in the A-10 against a great opponent like Xavier, but uh, a good start so far for GW. Very, very important for their confidence to try to hang in this game. If they can hang in this game, I think Carl Hobbs would be happy to be thinking in the neighborhood with about five minutes to go and give themselves a chance. Just over four minutes gone by here at Xavier. David West, triple team down low, but he hits anyway. Just took it quick, the athleticism, the feel for the game, didn't have any outlets, just knew he was in great position, and finished. So many guys can do everything and they can't finish. Well, David West can do that, he can finish. Closing in on 2000 for his career, and Hall traveled, slipped on the floor. David West off to a good start. Four points today and just two shy of 2,000 for his career. Getting loose down low and beating the double team. Xavier leads it 8-6 to six over GW. Atlantic 10 basketball today. Xavier leading George Washington 8-6. to six. And GW, Tim Capstraw, a very young team. You see the scoring distribution there. Eight freshmen and four sophomores accounting for 64% of their points. No, oh, the, the future is bright at GW. The, they're reaping the awards of uh, rewards of hard recruiting. Look at the, today we see Mike Hall do it. Right There's Mike Hall right there. And, and Mensa Bonsu, his athleticism, a lot of good young players. I'll tell you the most important coach and GW staff is gonna be their strength coach though. You're gonna to have to develop these bodies, it's gonna be important in that regard. Lionel Chalmers quickly into the front court for Xavier. David West left alone. Rebounded by Omar Williams, another one of those freshmen who just checked in. Yeah, he's six foot nine and can play some point guard. He's the point guard. Backup point guard number one right there, Omar Williams, but he's got to develop his body. Greg Colucci, a junior out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, also in the game. Stripped by West. That's been a problem from the young GW forwards to get the ball taken from him easily. West just two points shy of 2,000 for his career. He passes inside to Miles. And that's the beauty of David West, though, the touch on that pass. He had a great feel. He just didn't throw a normal pass. He lobbed it just enough in the air for Anthony Miles. That's his feel for the game. If Carl Hobbs and GW need time. Xavier on top, 10 to 6. Let's take a look at this. He sizes up the situation, and he has touch on a pass. He just doesn't see Miles. He sees the defense. He throws it away, and it's an easy catch, almost like a quarterback who throws a nice pass to the receiver. He doesn't throw it too hard. He has feel. That's the beauty of West. This is what the National Player of the Year uh, Award voters got to recognize. It's not about stats with David West. It's his overall feel for the game. In a you know, previous possession, he helped break the press. Right there in a the half court, he made a beautiful assist. What a beautiful player, and look how close he is to 2,000. He got 47 of those 1,900 <laughs> points the other day against Dayton back on February 8th here at the Centaur Center. Oh, smooth jumper by Pops Mensa Bonsu. Yeah, we got those guys that don't have to bend their knees much to finish play. Mensa Bonsu just rides it. Little change of defense right here. A 2-3 or a 1-2-2 monster zone by GW. Sato to Finn. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Miles, nice spin move. Basket doesn't count. Miles stepped out of bounds. Take a quick look at Anthony Miles. You get a feel for his, oh, maybe. I didn't see him go out, but uh, let's get back to the game here. <laughs> Don't want to get in trouble. Xavier by two, George Washington with the ball. Ball to Williams, Thompson. Nice ball movement though. They're really sharing it nice, this GW. TJ Thompson from very deep. It's that ball movement, it really worked the defense. That's what created the opening for Thompson. A nice delivery by Colucci. George Washington takes a one-point lead. They've had a tremendous history of basketball at GW, 88 years. Chalmers for three. Hall 
with the flush. The forwards of GW are getting out in transition. Bad is going to have to address floor balance when Xavier shoots the ball. We've seen Mensa Bonsu out in front, and that time Mike Hall with his athleticism. George Washington by three. Finn trying to tie it up. Couple tip tries. Rebounded by Greg Colucci. Mensa Bonsu rejected by Miles. GW on a 7-0 run over the last two minutes. And they're getting it done in transition, Tim. They're doing a great job because you don't want to play against that half-court defense of Xavier. It's one of the best in the country. So what you need to do is get easy baskets. And that's Mike Hall leaking out, playing the left side of the zone. And when the shot went up, he took off. A great job by TJ Thompson identifying, identifying him up in front of the field. They gave him the NBA walk there, too. You <laughs> like that? No dribble, just right to the hole the for the jam. Pops Mensa Bonsu on the line, and Will Cottle checks in to replace Anthony Miles. Cottle, a freshman out of Indianapolis. Talented big guy, six foot nine. Miles with his second foul, so that's why Cottle's getting the early look. Mensa Bonsu shooting just under 60%. Nails that free throw. Largest lead for George Washington, four points. And Pops takes a seat. There's another thing about West. Now, you just keep talking about it, but he helps break the press because he can dribble and pass and handle in this field for the game. Chris Monroe, George Washington's leading scorer, back in there. Caudle. Chalmers. Three ball. <laughs> Play Xavier zone for long because you got Chalmers, Finn, and Sato who can knock it down. The skip pass. TJ Thompson. That is his second three point field goal in the first half, and George Washington back on top by four. But how about the feel from Mike Hall with that skip pass? Great vision. What a stroke by Thompson. Got a front to post. Playing hard defense, but you got to really. Keep an eye on David West. And they get assist to Sato. David West scores the 2,000th point of his career. How about that? And Hall charged for an offensive foul. No basket. Strong move by Mike Hall. Maybe a little too strong. That's Mike Hall. David West scores a 2,000 point of his career on a layup. And he is the eighth person to do it in A-10 history. David West, congratulations. We'll be back. This copyrighted telecast is produced by the authority of the Atlantic 10 Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlantic 10 Conference is strictly prohibited. David West scores the 2,000th point of his career and becomes the first player in A-10 history to amass 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Amazing, and he's doing it around the basket today, but he can do it anywhere. He's beating double teams, triple teams, and he can finish around the hoop. David West, congratulations. And with four more points today, David West will move past Tyrone Hill for second all time on the Xavier scoring list. So a lot of milestones today for Mr. West. Keith Jackson checks into the game for Xavier, wearing number 25. Ball knocked out of bounds. The Musketeers will keep it. Reset the lineup for you. Xavier has Jackson, Sato, West, Will Caudill, and Diedrich Finn. Sato from deep. Caught all with an offensive rebound. Well, that's what you give up when you're playing zone. A lot of offensive rebound opportunities. Jackson hits. That's Jackson's game. He's an energy guy off the bench. He can really get it done. Sixth man from here in Cincinnati. Yeah, impressive slash move and hang time in the lane. Tied at 17. 10.55 left in the first half. Tamal for Sean. 
Didn't get anything for his trouble. Good defense by the Musketeers. But this, oh. Foul underneath, a blocking foul on the pass. Charge to Tamal Forshan. Now Will Cottle right there, a little bit, uh, the big man making a good kick out. Foul. Wholesale changes for GW. Mike Paul back in there. Chris Monroe, Omar Williams, Tamal Forshan, and Pops Mensa Bonsu. Sato finds Chalmers, and he just lost it. Again, Dave, the story of the game for GW is hang around as long as you can, and with 10.37 remaining, the score is tied. If you're Carl Hobbs, the coach at GW, you're feeling good. Just tell your guys, keep what you're doing. Play with confidence. We'll mix up the defenses on the defensive end, but offensive, we get the ball movement, and it hasn't had to be the Chris Monroe show. Mensa Bonsu. Two tips missed by GW, but they get a new shot clock. Monroe. Look at the effort on the board by these young guys at GW. About five shots in this sequence. That one rejected by Jackson, but a foul is called against Xavier. First foul on Jackson. Look at the activity on the offensive backboard. There's Pops right there getting after it. Mike Hall tipping, getting after it. Tamal Forshawn, Chris Monroe, everybody. Mensa Bonsu, second and third effort. Very, very impressive by the Colonials. Can't say enough about these young athletes. The future's bright at GW. I tell you what, if I'm a guard and I'm being recruited by GW, I'm going to be feeling pretty good about it. Oh, absolutely. Carl Hobbs, known for uh, his coaching of backcourt men and coached all those great backcourt guys and recruited them up at UConn, like uh, Richard Hamilton. Ray Allen. A great ball movement. See, the, the Colonials aren't holding the ball. They keep moving it, giving themselves some opportunities. Mensa Bonsu rejected by West. He's the all-time shot block leader here at Xavier. Finally cleared by Monroe. Good effort getting back defensively by GW, staying with the plate and keep their head down after the block shot. Xavier not used to trailing or losing here at home. They're 12-1 and one at the Cintas Center this year. Stolen by West. Jackson. Sato rejected, but fouled first. Couple uncharacteristic transition plays by Thad Mata's Xavier team. Not finishing, and they've had numbers and advantage. Watch this right here. Jackson with the pull-up opportunity. Sato with some bounce right there. A lot of activity. Sato gets himself to the free throw line. Foul was called on for Sean. Sato drains it, an 82% free throw shooter this year. Imperative, though, that GW, these young GW players, as TJ Thompson comes back in the game, Coach Carl Hobbs is saying, take care of the basketball. But a little careless on the other end if we keep turning it over. Too many easy opportunities for the Musketeers. Sato gives Xavier the lead by one. Diedrich Finn back in for that motto, replacing Sato. The two-time defending A-10 player of the week. The junior has been terrific lately. GW doing a good job, and Monroe has yet to score. So it's been a balance. The young guy's doing it. A little bit of out of control that time by Pence, by Pops. Forshawn saves it and puts it home. And the early going here, GW is showing much more athleticism, especially on the offensive backboard. And we're talking about David West and Will Caudill and Anthony Miles. Senior leadership by Chalmers becomes important. Jackson, rebounded by Monroe. GW by one with the ball, eight and a half minutes left in the first half. 
Hall from deep. He got it. Three-pointer for Mike Hall, the freshman. And credit Chris Monroe with being in traffic underneath the basket, keeping his head up and finding Mike Hall. Good team play. A little change of defense has really helped GW playing his 2-3 zone. Chalmers, West with a rebound. And it looked like an over-the-back foul. Push off on Mensa Bonsu. Again, that's what you get in trouble with when you play zone defense. It allows open alleys for offensive rebound opportunities. Dave Popkin, Tim Capstraw with you. A-10 basketball to Cintas Center here in Cincinnati. And this is a gorgeous place. Oh, it is beautiful. I had heard a lot about it and the enthusiasm here and the sellouts and just the, the energy. This crowd is getting ready to rock, but they haven't had much to get pumped up about early. That's flip-flop back and forth. Four ties, five lead changes thus far in the first half. Good from Lionel Chalmers. Nice kick out by Angelo Smith, finding Chalmers on the perimeter. GW is going to test Xavier from the outside, try to take the scoring away from the inside, especially David West. So Chalmers, Finn, and Sato are going to have to knock him down. Chris Monroe still no points, averages 20 a game. Monroe looking for his shot. He can't find it yet. And an offensive rebound. Foul. Called on Mike Hall. And Xavier will be shooting the one and one. Mike Hall, very bright kid, also recruited by Princeton and considering medical school already at GW, wearing number three in gold. He's one of those guys, Dave, that when his transcript comes to you, you run to admissions. <laughs> you just want to run up there and say, look at this, straight A's pumped up, and tell him there's so many guys that come to you. <laughs> You're a little cautious going to admissions office, but not with Mike Hall. Angelo Smith, the freshman, misses the front end. Omar Williams to Monroe, open three. Just really like the way GW's playing. They're sharing the ball, finding the open man, playing fast and loose. Monroe, nothing for four from the floor thus far. Will Connell draws a double team. Had it rejected. TJ Thompson. Finn on the break. Oh, that was pretty. Couldn't finish it. <laughs> we got some action here, partner, going up and down, but nobody's finishing. T.J. Thompson, sophomore out of Germantown, Maryland, running the show on offense right now for Coach Hobbs. And another foul call, this one against Sato. 6.21 left in the first half. George Washington on top of Xavier, 23 to 22. You can't leave Chalmers open. He has eight points in the first half for the Musketeers. We'll be back with more A-10 basketball after this. Mike Hall with seven points and five rebounds for GW. They lead Xavier. 23-22, 6.21 left in the first half, and it's time for the U.S. Airways out-of-town scoreboard. One final from earlier today, Dayton edges Fordham, 69-64. The Rams playing well on the road. Other games in progress, Duquesne by one over LaSalle in the first half. Gary Neal on quite a roll, and coming up a little bit later, St. Bonaventure at Temple, 4 o'clock start, and Richmond visiting St. Joe's at 7 o'clock, and Xavier's next game will be against St. Joe's Ooh. in Philadelphia on Wednesday. That'll be a doozy. Yeah, and if you're fat and you're saying, I hope my guys aren't just looking past today right now and thinking about St. Joe's, because they got work to do to here today. Finn can't save it at the scorer's table. George Washington ball. Timeout called by Xavier before Finn fell out of bounds. So a heady move and 
Thad Mata and the troops get to talk it over. Well, Thad Mata is about defense and getting it done. Look at the scoring leaders right here. And Rowe and West obviously up top, but Marcus Green getting it done. Well, yes, he is, and you take a look at the leading scorers in the league. Green is first in scoring, and Chris Monroe playing in this game second. David West is right behind him in third. Last two guys have scored more than 2,000 points in their career, so uh, this is a great year in the A-10 for top scorers. Marcus Green did it the other night to... Uh the GW just took over the game. It's not only that Marcus Green puts up numbers, it's when he does it, he's so dominant in the fourth quarter. Both teams struggling from the field. Second shooting half, excuse me. Less than 40% Tim. The defense getting it done. There's been some looks on the floor offensively, but defense, the teams are working hard, especially GW, if they're shaking it up. West hits again, and Xavier retakes the lead by one. Get a smart move, creep behind the zone to that short corner area, caught it, and knocked it down. That's okay. West is so capable for so many, from so many areas on the floor. David West, the two-time Atlantic 10 Player of the Year, probably going to be three. Nice move in the post by Omar Williams. How about the matchup problems Omar Williams is going to cause in his career? At six foot nine, he can play the point. You can bring him down there. You can post him up. What a future! And GW back on top by one. GW doing a good job of knowing where Sato is in his own defense. Chalmers from deep again, and the putback for Angelo Smith. Smith doing a great job camping out on the weak side. That's where most of the rebounds come. Found the lane and finished the play. First basket for Smith. And Xavier Reed takes the lead. And a bumping foul charged against Smith on the perimeter. Another look at the last Xavier basket. A little shot by Chalmers and Smith just attacking the offensive backboard. Again, that's what you give up when you play zone defense. You don't have those block out responsibility. And that guy, Angelo Smith, providing some nice energy off the, off the bench today. And getting some quality time for the number 13 team in the country. Xavier is number 16 in the latest RPI. They've been in the top 20 all year. And a lot of observers think they're going to make some noise in the big dance this year. Oh. Uh, no surprise, I think they'd be upset if they didn't. Yep. Tipped out by Diedrich Finn, and a foul is called on Xavier foul Finn. Diedrich Finn. That's his first personal foul, team's seventh. Well, Finn applies such terrific ball, ball pressure. He's taken a number of teams just out of their off out of their offense this year. When you have Chalmers and Finn, two terrific defenders, along with Sato. Boy, the perimeter defense combined with that interior athleticism of Xavier. Is why they're one of the premier defensive teams, not only in the A-10, but in the entire NCAA. T.J. Thompson averaging in double figures. He's also the leading free throw shooter on this team at 77%. Very smooth stroke. It's the front end of the one and one. This game is tied at 26. We've seen five ties and eight lead changes in the first half alone. The major lineup changes here for GW. Jazz Cowan in the game, a freshman from Baltimore, wearing number 23. Also, Alexander Kiriev, a freshman out of the Ukraine, in the game for George Washington. David West. Foul. Looks like Kiriev got him. And it, and a terrific example of the all-around skills. It's what the Western here in the open four, good field, little hesitation dribble, reverse dribble, using the pump fake. That's his feel for the game. He's at six foot nine, he can do it all. He is gonna be an outstanding NBA player. And David West needs just one point to tie. Tie, Tyrone Hill. Hey, for second all time at Xavier. And we had a chance to meet the all time leading scorer here at Xavier just before the game. David West has a long way to go to catch Byron Larkin, but Byron now doing radio for the Xavier Network. And David West has indeed tied for second place all time here for the Musketeers. A uh, rejection from behind. And an offensive foul on Monroe. West was set up under the basket, and he drew the charge. 
Good good execution here early by GW, but what you need to do when you go to the basket is pull up. And a technical foul as well, Tim. It's Angelo Smith that drew the charge. He did a great job, and that brought up the bench of GW. Second foul on Chris Monroe, and still Monroe, nothing of five from the floor, and no points. And you see the bow tie of the head coach of GW, Carl Hobbs. That is in honor of Jim Fallon, the retiring head coach of Mount St. Mary's, who is coaching his final game today after 49 seasons at the Mount. GW not far, of course, from Mount St. Mary's in Maryland, and a very well-respected guy, uh, probably a future Hall of Famer, Jim Fallon. Coaches across the country are honoring him today on bow tie day. Xavier takes the lead on the technical free throw. And the technical was called against Carl Hobbs. So it's Musketeers ball. Both teams now in the bonus and Xavier in the double bonus. The rest of this first half, 420 left of the first, Xavier by one. Look, Mensa Bonsu working hard though. Credit that young freshman, 6'9", he can do it defensively. Ah. And bumping and shoving, TJ Thompson. Charged with the personal foul. Important that this GW team remain poised right now. It's a critical juncture in the game. You want to play a very, very good first half, and you want to stay solid. That's what what comes with experience. Coach Carl Hobbs getting a little excited on the bench, but his players need to remain poised. Diedrich Finn hits the first, a 67% free throw shooter. He was an Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week in mid-January, one of the bright young lights in the league. He is outstanding. He's second in the Atlantic 10 in assist to turnover ratio at about two and a half to one. He can knock him down to three at about 50% in Atlantic 10 play. Little change of defense here, a little 2-1-2 extended by Xavier. Thompson calls out the play. GW with the ball down three. 3.55 left in the first half. George Washington trying to win their 11th game of the year, their fifth in conference. And a foul on Xavier's Lionel Chalmers. We're trying to deny Chris Monroe the basketball, and they've done an outstanding job of that because Monroe is, hasn't scored today. Omar Williams back in there replacing Jazz Cowan. First team all Baltimore last year and another one of the recruiting coups for Carl Hobbs and his staff. Chris Monroe nets his first point of the night. Well, like all great scorers, Chris Monroe has made a living in his career on the free throw line. That's what David West does and this is what Chris Monroe does. He's got that body type that can get in the lane, get fouled and still finish. Chris Monroe, fourth all-time in the A-10 in scoring. He needs to get warmed up. GW down by one, 3.50 left in the first half. We have seen nine lead changes so far. Xavier leading at 30-29. to 29. The Canon Business Solutions game story. Neither team shooting particularly well, Tim. The rebounding is even. Uh, GW 3 of 5 from three-point range. David West, 10 points in the first half. Yeah, but the story is that the GW uh, young athletes are playing extremely hard. They're playing with confidence and they're hanging around. It's so very important that a young team gain confidence throughout a the game. They took uh, Xavier's first initial Knockout punch, they hung around and they're playing good basketball. Dave West open for a moment. Chalmers got it. What are you off about West though? He had a good shot, but he gave it up to Chalmers because he had a great shot. That's Xavier's largest lead. Four points. That's the way it's gone so far. Ball smacked out of bounds by the pesky Musketeer defense. Watch this quick feed and decision by West. It's taking the air out, reversing it, Chalmers banging it. Chalmers a 37% shooter from downtown. Maybe not 100% after that broken foot on New Year's Eve, but he's in his eighth game back. 
And playing well for Xavier, Omar Williams with the leaner. Important basket by that guy, Omar Williams. Answering a little bit of a run by Xavier. Again, critical that GW finish out, close out this half. They played very, very well. The zone defense, again, continuing to help them with the zone defense. Screen on the baseline, though. That guy can drain him. And he does it there. Romain Sato buries the three. The junior out of Central Africa. Nice set play off the baseline. West set a nice screen and freed up Sato. Timeout called by George Washington. A 30-second timeout called by Carl Hobbs, their second-year head coach. Take a look here against his own. Nice skip pass over the top by Chalmers. See the screen by David West and freeing up one of the best shooters in the country, Romain Sato. And here is Sato hitting it from the corner in an earlier game this season. Coming off of picks. But what I love about Sato Davis, his game has evolved. He used to, he came in and he was just going to be a shooter. But what a beautiful guy. Indeed, he comes here, has only been in the country four or five years, a, a solid citizen, very spiritual. Uh, he's really embraced his culture and, and he stayed with it. He still makes his own food here on campus so he can get a feeling of home. Dave, when I get a chance, I gotta have a, show you a quote or talk about a quote from Thad Mata in this magazine. It really told the story about Romain Sano. Not your typical college basketball player and we mean that in a good way. Xavier by five, their largest lead, 2.13 left in the first half. Two on the shot clock, Omar Williams. Another big basket by that 6'9 freshman, Omar Williams. Out of Celestial Prep in Philadelphia. A-10 Rookie of the Week in early February. At 13, the last time these teams played, and he's played well in the first half. Sato for three, get it! Relaxing in the zone defense. You better know where Romain Sato is. He's getting hot, starting to heat up. Sato with seven, Xavier by six. Pardon, 10 for Sato after that three. So Xavier takes their largest lead with a minute and a half left in the first. Pops Mensa Bansu back in there. Kareev is fouled. Here's Sato again, Tim. Just knocking it down, getting comfortable. See, that's too much space for him. He can, he'll embarrass you. He can step deep behind the arc and knock him down. Look at those numbers. But let me tell you, show, tell you that quote that was in the, in the, in the magazine. Thad Mata says he's grateful for everything he gets from a pair of shoes to a pair of shorts. Says Thad Mata, he doesn't expect those things. And, and just a beautiful person, Romain Sato is, and Thad Mata appreciates it. His club on top by five points. Xavier trying to win their 13th straight game, and Sato has been a big reason why. Benza Bonsu checks out. Reset the GW lineup for you. Akinbata in the game, along with Kiriev. Akinbata had it rejected by Smith. Colucci also in the game with Williams and with Thompson. Smith, the freshman, no basket. Offensive foul on Angelo Smith. Can't argue that, though. The officials today have been very consistent under charge calls. That's been the way it's been called. Angelo Smith has been provided a good boost, but nice sales job by Carrier. Oh, that was a little bit of uh, what you know is a little Flopsky by the uh, Ukraine. <laughs> One minute left of the first half. Kareev, best three-point shooter on the team. Couldn't get it. Looked like it went off of Omar Williams, and it did. These GW athletes, these young athletes, are not afraid to mix it up on the offensive backboard. They've really done a good job of using a quick athleticism to keep the ball alive. Tim Xavier has taken a five-point lead here, and. They're a very balanced team. It doesn't have to be one player. It doesn't have to be West. Right now, they have three players in double figures. They average four players in double figures for the season. Chalmers has 11. Finn launches and misses. 
Sato with 10, West with 10. It's just a very balanced effort. And they're 11 and 0 when four or five guys score in double figures, so balance is a key for Xavier. Williams on the move. Crowd wanted to travel. And a foul is called on GW. Dokun Akinbata. That's his, his first. Carl Hobbs, former longtime assistant at UConn. He works hard on the sideline, too. He's very active. Six year assistant at Boston College as well under former GW coach Mike Jarvis. And did a great job at UConn, and really he. It's about recruiting at this level of basketball, and you know, just by the appearance of these young athletes, the future's bright for this guy, Carl Hines. Captain of the UConn team in 1984, fourth all-time there in assists. Smith can't hit his free throw. 25 seconds left in the first half, shot clock is off. GW will probably just hold for one here. Xavier leading at 39-34. Spread it out. The ability of the 6'9", Omar Williams. To Thompson. Missed the three. And that is the end of the first half. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone have a play. It's yours. Seesaw first, first half. Nine lead changes. And Xavier leads heading into the locker room. David West with 10 points for the Musketeers. They're on top, 39-34. T.J. Thompson leading GW with eight. And we are back with the halftime festivities. After this, you're watching A-10 Basketball. We'll be back. March Madness begins in Dayton, Ohio, and that can mean only one thing, the 2003 Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship at the University of Dayton Arena. The action starts on Thursday, March 13th with four quarterfinal games, followed by the semifinal double that are on Friday the 14th, and concluding with the Atlantic 10 Championship game on Saturday, March 15th. For tickets, call the UD box office at 937-229-4433. The 2003 Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship, March 13th through 15th at the University of Dayton Arena, the hottest game in town. Atlantic 10 Basketball is brought to you by Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. And by your local Volkswagen dealers, a proud sponsor of Atlantic 10 Basketball. We are back in the Queen City of Cincinnati. Xavier leading George Washington 39 to 34 here at halftime. And the Colonials hanging in there with the number 13 team in the country. Mike Hall, a big reason why. Seven points, five rebounds. And you see the NCAA leaders, Carmelo Anthony of Syracuse, leads all freshmen to rebounds. And Mike Hall is third. Just doing a great job. He's got five today and a big reason why GW is hanging around. Hall is also fourth in the A-10 in offensive rebounding. Here are the leading scorers. T.J. Thompson with eight points for GW. And Lionel Chalmers has 11 for Xavier. Well, no surprise for Xavier trying to go inside to David West in their first possession. You can always tell what a coach talks about at halftime. So even though these Colonials at GW are playing 2-3 zone, that model wants West to get touches. Mensa Bansu doing a good job in his post defense down low. Crowd standing and trying to get the team into the game. They really didn't have a chance to explode in the first half. Not a lot of huge threes or dunks or anything. Just a, a steady performance thus far for the Musketeers. Well, they're not afraid to just grind out a victory, but wow. Oh, Mensa Bansu hits the deck hard after a miss on that dunk. They've hit his shoulder. He's in some definite pain in the lane. Watch him going baseline, exploding to the basket, taking off. Just falling down awkwardly. So impressive with his athletic ability. Anytime you get up that high and then you're disrupted and, and lose control, it's a big collision. 6'9", 220, Pops Mensa Bonsu, a freshman from London, England, and also from St. Augustine Prep in southern New Jersey. Tremendous high school career. Also 
uh, stand out in the high jump and the long jump, and you can see him leaping that time with his head near the rim and hit the deck hard. Looks like his arm may have gotten caught underneath him. Take a look right here, check the arm. Oh, feet got out on, in front of him, yes, landing on that uh, right shoulder. Maybe he's just gaining back his, uh, his wind right now, hopefully. One of the promising freshmen in the A-10, Pops Mensa Bonsu, trying to get up off the court. Our next telecast will be later today, 4 o'clock, St. Bonaventure at Temple. That should be a good one. St. Bonaventure 13 and 3. And then tomorrow, we'll have a double header for you on the Atlantic 10 TV network. Women's game and a men's game. And they're trying to help up Ben Saban Sue. Gotta like the class here at Xavier in the Sintas Center. Everybody giving him a major round of applause. They really understand their basketball in the state of Ohio and all athletics. I've always been impressed. Whenever you got a recruit from the state of Ohio, they're always excellent. Looks like he may have bruised his ribs or something holding his right side. I just think it's a good sign that he's walking around. He's not majorly grimacing. He's not holding anything in particular. He'll hopefully be back in the game. Not a minute gone by here in the second half. No one has scored yet. Xavier on top by five with the basketball, wearing white if you're just joining us. Diedrich Finn drives and loses it, but it was smacked out of bounds by Tamal Horshan. GW just four and nine on the road this year, and they haven't won one on the road in the A-10. This would be huge. It would make their season. Sato. And just some beautiful offensive execution off the underneath out of bounds left remains Sato wide open. That's execution. That's what Todd Mata, Mata teams are known for. Three ball. Mike Hall cannot answer. Romain Sato, who leads all scorers right now. Sato with 13 and seven rebounds as well. At the double team on Miles. David West. Good transition defense, running back, slowing down T.J. Thompson. Got to get this guy going, Chris Monroe. Monroe only two points, still hasn't made a field goal yet, and he is tied up by West. Look at the one-on-one -on -one defense here by David West, moving him. Perfect defensive positioning. Again, another little thing David West does well. West, the number one shot blocker all time in the Atlantic 10. Xavier with their largest lead. Thompson changes that. And some clean execution for GW. Nice screen that set up TJ Thompson. Who has the open floor? What a press breaker he is. What a luxury. Thompson has 11. Miles caught underneath. That's a jump ball. And Xavier will keep it via the possession arrow. A little casual right there, though, by David West and Anthony Miles. Got to give the big guy something he can handle clean. That Mata has won his conference every year that he's been a head coach. Won it at Butler, and he's won it here at Xavier. In his third year overall, 71 and 18 is Mata's record. Took me eight years to get 71 wins. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Foul away from the ball. But I don't think that Mata has to worry about a broadcasting career at this stage. No. <laughs> Great. Different guys going after Chris Monroe. Now you got Chalmers on it. Oh, Monroe counted and he's fouled. Well, that's the Chris Monroe that's been getting it done for four years at GW. Look at this power play right here. In there with a pivot in the lane and has the ability to finish and get the foul. A chance for the old school three point play. He's the ultimate power guard. That's what we thought we'd see a lot of today is Monroe knocks it down and finishes the play, but 
Xavier doing a good job denying him, throwing different people at him. That time he had Chalmers, though, knew he could score over him. Monroe still only five points, and he has a streak of 39 in a row in double figures on the line, but you have to think that he will get there. Foul on Omar Williams. That's his first. One guy in foul trouble now for Xavier. The last foul was on Lionel Chalmers. He has three. Thompson lays it in. How about the anticipation? T.J. Thompson shooting the gap, tying it up. And George Washington on an 8-0 run to tie the game at 42. 17 minutes left in the ball game. The effort. Got to thread the needle that time. Knocked out of bounds by GW. Now, GW has changed their defenses a lot tonight, but here in the second half, they've stuck with some man-to-man -man defense, and they're just flat out playing hard. Do that run over the last minute and a half. Get it into West. And he's fouled from behind. Last couple times down, it seems like Xavier is trying to deliberately feed West and try to get him off a little. Well, get him going, and so many things happen positively when he touches the ball, because if he doesn't score, he usually draws double teams and he makes beautiful passes to open players. Tim, do you think he's the player of the year nationally? I think he's right there, and I think it has a lot to do with, because it goes beyond stats with him. That's a beautiful pass and feed to West, but West's all-around skills. I've been studying tape on him the last couple days, and I can't believe, I keep talking about his dribbling, his ability to pass, his feel for the game. Several NBA scouts here today. West has 12. Chalmers missed the layup. Rebounded by Mike Hall. Thompson. Followed by Hall, but he came over the top. But again, the athleticism, Mike Hall climbing the ladder right there. That's one of those you don't even get mad about. He flat out jumped over someone. <laughs> The quickness, defense right there, and the hand speed by Mike Hall. Then he runs down the other end. Yes, the foul is on him. But if you're a coach, you never get mad at that foul right there because that means you're being aggressive and you're going after the glass. Third foul on Hall. He's the only one with three on the GW side. And not pleased. Out of Shepherd High School in Chicago. A lot of uncharacteristic Xavier plays this afternoon, not taking care of the basketball. Not finishing easier plays in transition. Remember, they struggled the other night against Duquesne. Sato with the steal. Tipped in by David West. He has 14. Sato can just dominate you defensively. That time he just mauled the offense, took the ball, and made the play on the other end. George Washington down four with the basketball. 15-40 left in this Atlantic 10 contest. Dave Popkin and Tim Capstrong with you from the Cintas Center. Jazz Cowan. A bad decision by Cowan. He got out of control. Sato. Three ball corner pocket. George Washington needs time. Xavier with a 7-0 run to take a 49-42 lead. And Romain Sato draining it, 16 points to lead all scores, Xavier by seven. 49-42, Xavier over George Washington, and our next telecast coming up at four o'clock today, St. Bonaventure at Temple, should be a good one. Most of you will see that one, and we have a double header on the Atlantic 10 television network tomorrow and that will be the women Duquesne at UMass at noon and then a men's game UMass at Rhode Island at 2 o'clock check your local listings Atlantic 10 basketball big possession for GW they need to answer Xavier right now let's see if Monroe gets a touch They'll find a way to get him a look Xavier clamping down Thompson came up short West was in his face Anthony Miles lost it out of bounds. Miles quiet with two points. He's been playing very well lately for the Musketeers, but they lead it anyway. 49-42 over GW. 
George Washington trailing Xavier University. 49-42 Atlantic 10 basketball. 14-58 left in the game. And Chris Monroe, five points today, giving him 2,176 for his career. And now just needs 51 to pass Joe Hollop, a uh, star for GW back in the mid-50s. Tim, what a career. What a career. He's just done it. He's been the consistent player, a 20-point guy year in and year out for GW. He's on track to get it done. How about that being the all-time leading scorer at an institution like GW? Big time, Chris Monroe. And you figure if they play one or two sure, he's playoff games, he'll... You would think in good shape. He's been quiet this afternoon, though, with only five points. It's gonna become important for him to get touches, but credit to defense. Well, Xavier, different guys taking turns, denying him the basketball. Pops Mensa Bonsu back in the game. He was out for a while with that injury when he fell hard under the basket and a foul underneath on David West. Again, I, I really like the offensive philosophy of Carl Hobbs' GW team. He allows his big players at 6'9 to be face-up type of players. That's Omar Williams, six foot nine. He's got good quickness off the dribble. We've seen that a lot today. Mike Hall's taking it off the dribble. Uh, Mensa Bansu just you know, got back into the game right now. It's shown some, some face-up ability. So I love the fact that Carl Hobbs letting his big guys play a little bit on the perimeter. Monroe tied up and fouled. And now they have to come in and untangle the bodies. Looks like a game of twister in the lane. <laughs> but how about the two toughest guys in the Atlantic 10 going at it right here. Monroe taking it in and Romain Sato with the defense. Takedown. Nobody wanted, you notice nobody else wanted to jump in there right there? <laughs> Sato saying, give me my arm back. Yeah, I know. I'll need that later. <laughs> Williams missed it from in close. Rebounded by Keith Jackson. Diedrich Finn to Jackson. Jackson had a career high 21 recently against St. Bonaventure. Gets his own rebound and is fouled. Some instant energy off the bench. He sure, and that's his game. He really comes in and just provides an enormous boost. And Jackson getting it going. Just a live, a live body. Fresh off the bench. Difference maker when he comes in. He's the guy that got all those minutes when Lionel Chalmers was sitting out with the foot injury. The broken foot. Jackson got a lot of starting minutes. And the coaches really like his attitude of accepting his role, going back to the bench, and coming out and being that sixth man, seventh man energy guy. He's accepted it without any problems. And that's why you have a good team. Your star player like David West shares the ball. Keith Jackson knows his role. Everybody understands Sato does the little things. That's why they have a special team here at Xavier. And Xavier takes an eight-point lead, 14.09 left. Mensa Bonsu quickly back to the bench, so he may be hurting Tamal Forshan in the game and with the basketball now for GW. Forshan missed it and rebounded by Will Cottle. Shot selection a little shaky in recent minutes for GW. That's why Xavier's starting to separate. Sato, smooth on the turnaround. Nobody in the A-10 uses the glass better than Romain Sato, whether it be facing up or in the post. Sato has 18 to give Xavier their largest lead, 52-42 Musketeers. A 10-0 run over the last three and a half minutes. Look at the defense really clamping down. Oh. Blocking foul as Monroe went hard against Diedrich Finn. Take a look right here. Finn trying to D up right now. Didn't get his foot down. Good job by the officials. Different guys guarding Monroe. There's Finn again. He's all over the place. Shooting the gap. Aggressive crowd appreciating the effort of that super freshman Diedrich Finn. And we are here at the Cintas Center in Cincinnati, the home of Xavier. Dave Popkin, Tim Capstraw, Atlantic 10 basketball. Xavier just starting to open it up. GW could really use a basket here as the Musketeers are up 10. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
the defense of the Musketeers of Xavier. They really play it very solid. They don't give you cheap fouls, easy opportunities up from the free throw line. They just play good, fundamental defense. Look at the show up with the rotation. Poor Sean could not wrestle, wrestle it away from David West. And you can. Knocked out of bounds, and Xavier with a turnover. But Xavier's defense is beginning to dominate. They just wear you down. We got 40 minutes of this, and Carl Hobbs, he had a lot of answers for it for the first 20 minutes, but here in the second half, this defensive intensity and just the fundamental soundness of their defense, outstanding. Look at that, the show up by Carl. Laid in nicely by Tamal Forshawn out of Willingboro, New Jersey, a sophomore, 6'6". And he says he wants to take your job eventually, Tim, a future broadcaster. <laughs> Tamal Forshawn, a talkative type. Foul on him, that's his third. Three players with three fouls for George Washington. And that could be a factor today, Tim, because you have three guys with three. They only have nine scholarship players dressed. Now, they got some young athletes and they're working hard. You just do the best you can when you're competing against the inside ability of Xavier. Sato catches, keeps it high, elevates, and finishes. Big time Romain Sato. Sato with 20 points, seven rebounds, two assists. And he has been on quite a roll. Two straight A-10 Player of the Week awards and vying for another. Chris Monroe, Caudill again, shows up and cuts him off. Look at how they clamp. Look at everybody show up on defense. The fundamental rotation on the defensive side. Getting it done for Xavier. Monroe travels. It'll be Xavier Ball after the break. Starting to get into it now. Sato has been solid. 20 for him. Xavier by 10. Xavier on top by 10 here at home, trying to win their 13th straight game. They've already clinched their seventh straight 20 win season. And Romain Sato has been a big reason why a preseason first teamer here in the A-10. And the evolution of Romain Sato's game, he came in as a three point shooter, but you saw him in transition. He does it there, he can post up. He can do all the different things on the floor right now. And that's why Romain Sato is so special. His game is, it's just keeps getting better and better. Look at those numbers. Four out of six from deep. This is his 44th game out of his last 48 in double figures, so very consistent as well. Little change of defense for GW, shown on extended 1 3 1. Benza Bonsu with a steal and the lay in. Do you know how hard it is for a 6 9 guy to do that? Wow. What upside these players have. Magic Johnson showed these guys that they could do it. And ever exactly. since, the big guys want to handle the ball, and, and now they really can. And this got a number of different guys that can do it for GW. These freshmen, what a recruiting job. Dietrich oh. and Jackson tried to put it back. Oh -ho. <laughs> and it came all the way back to half court. That's how much force he tried to jam it down with. <laughs> GW ball. Take a listen to this one. Whoa, Nelly! That was too easy, Pete Jackson. Sorry, partner. <laughs> Sorry, that was weak. Back to the game. <laughs> You've been planning that no, one. No, that week. was awful. That was awful. <laughs> For Sean to Mensa Bonsu. 10:50 left in the game. Xavier on top. 56-46, and a turnover. Traveling. Critical junctures of the game right now. Can GW get it back right now? They're down eight. They need to make another good run to get into this game. They're showing this 1-3-1 one, one defense. It's a very good defense for a team like GW because they're so long and athletic. They take away passing lanes. But it's very hard to pass the ball side to side over Omar Williams. Second half turnovers. Musketeers have been a little bit more sloppy, but they still maintain that lead. Chalmers, Jackson, oh, and it gets stuck in the flange, stuck between the rim and the backboard. You see that one about every 30 games. <laughs> I got no comment on that one, partner. <laughs> TJ Thompson back in there replacing Omar Williams. Williams sits down with six points, three rebounds. 
Thompson leading George Washington with 13 points. And again, the defense on Chris Monroe. The guards, different people playing him now. Chalmers has got him, making it an absolute nightmare for Chris Monroe this afternoon. Still only five points for Monroe. And a hold in the lane called against Xavier. Keith Jackson charged with that personal. That's his second. Xavier, the defending Atlantic 10 champs. Playing well down the stretch. Wednesday will be a big one for them at St. Joseph's. A high pick and roll action. Look at West help. Kicked out by Jackson. New shot clock. George Washington ball. That deflection by Jackson to help occurs because West help off the high pick and roll took GW out of their offensive field. Thompson, jitterbugs out, kicks it to Monroe for three. And I tell you what, partner, these TW Colonials aren't going away. Five-point game. It was a big basket for Monroe. He was struggling. Just two of eight from the floor. Chalmers, maybe two open. He got it. A confusion that time on defense. I'm not sure if GW knew what they were in. A couple guys playing a 1-3-1, a couple guys playing man-to-man. -man. Left Chalmers wide open. Chalmers has 13. A reach in and a steal by David West. And Chalmers all alone. Oh! What a block by Mensa Bonsu. It's a goaltending call. He's on the way down. Mensa Bonsu pleading his case. Take a look at this one. Look at David West. It's all around skills. I keep saying that. But watch his athleticism. A little quick look right here. Ooh. Tough call. That's a tough call right there. Great block. Monroe. Down low to four Sean. And a foul call on Xavier. Sato is third foul. Chalmers also has three with an Xavier foul. GW will be shooting the one and one. 9.01 left in the game. For Sean, just a 45% free throw shooter and came up short there. I don't know if GW is going to win this game, but this is certainly the type of game that Carl Hobbs and his staff with his young players can build on. It's an area that they can look to and say, hey, look what you've done against David West and Anthony Miles. You don't have to take a backseat to anyone in the country. Porchon with seven makes one of two. Six freshmen for GW, two of them start. Well, I'm and not, and partner, I'm not saying they're out playing David West and Anthony Miles, but they're playing with them. Oh, yeah. And they're showing that they can do things with them. And I just think they uh, can really build on this. West operating down low. He'll, he'll make you pay if your double team is late. That time, a knifing and the agility of David West. 16 points, seven rebounds, five assists. Xavier with a 10-point lead, 8.20 left. Mensa Bonsu, too hard. For Sean, West got a piece of it. Got a piece of that one, too, but a foul is called. And that's his third. West, not in good humor right now, but they say he's one of the funniest guys on the team. One of his favorite pastimes, sitting around watching the Golden Girls. <laughs> That's his favorite show. <laughs> Pops hits his first free throw. Pops Mensa Bonsu, a 70% free throw shooter. We've talked so much about David West, the basketball player, but how about David West, the student athlete? Well, he's already attained enough credits to graduate. He's enrolled in some graduate work here at Xavier, and he's been a model student athlete for Thad Mata and the Musketeers. 
and of course a candidate for the Wooden Award and the Naismith Award, the, wow. the two big player of the year awards. A prime candidate, a lot of people think he can get it. What an honor. Xavier by nine, under eight minutes to go. Mensa Bonsu with another steal. You think Xavier's gonna you know, get that knockout punch, but they can't do it. GW not really dipping deep into their bench. Hall has been out there a lot. Monroe, Mensa Bonsu, Williams. Not a positive matchup for GW, but Williams gets his own rebound. And one. Chance for a three-point play. Staying with it. See, I like the activity of these GW forwards on the board. They got they got very good second effort today. Look at everybody active. That's Mensa Bonsu, then there's Omar Williams. Understand that it's 6'9. He's a future point guard in this program. What an all-around game that guy has. Eight points, four rebounds today. David West with 16 points, eight rebounds, having another solid game. It's his 50th straight game in double figures. And he's starting to feel it down low. Xavier leads at 60-54. George Washington hanging in there against the number 13 team, Xavier, 60-54, to and playing well despite the fact that their best player, Chris Monroe, has struggled. He has just eight. Well, he's gotten a lot of swarming defense by the Xavier Musketeers, but he's done a good job of hanging in there. He didn't score early in the game, but now he's starting to get inside, make some plays, and then found himself open at the three-point line. And David West has already extended his consecutive double-digit streak to 50 games, second in the country. And Chris Monroe trying to get to 40 straight games in double digits and just two away from that. Second of the A-10 in scoring. West is third. Well, he's got eight points now, and the last time he was held under 10 points, double figures, was January 9th, 2002. Sato. Diedrich Finn, he's been quiet, two points today. Stolen by Thompson. Here's Monroe. And one. Chance for a three-point play for Chris Monroe, and he is into double figures, and GW is right in the middle of this game, down four. I love this play by Monroe in the open court. Look, he initiates the contact. He goes in, creates a little bit of contact on Sato, a little change of defense, forces the turnover. Look, he goes into the defense. Bob Chalmers, excuse me, creates a little bit of contact and then finishes the play. Nobody's better in the Atlantic 10 or nationally than Chris Monroe as far as finishing after he's been fouled. Quite a distinction there. 2,000 points, 700 free throws. First player in A-10 history to do it. That last foul was on Chalmers, his fourth. He goes to the bench, and Keith Jackson back in there for Xavier. Reset the lineups for you. Sato, Finn, Jackson, West, and Miles in the game for Xavier. Z uh, GW continuing to change their defense. Now back to the 2-3 zone, trying to confuse Xavier. GW has Thompson, Monroe, Williams, West, and Mensa Bonsu. 12 on the shot clock here. It is confusing them. Down to five. Finn sees it now. Two on the shot clock. Nowhere to go. Shot clock violation. Outstanding defensive sequence for GW. Changing up their defense, giving them another, another different look. That's the kind of play that can really pump up a team. That's a three ball for TJ Thompson, and he lets his bench know about it. Trying to get those guys pumped up. A 9-0 run for George Washington and the reigning A-10 Coach of the Year. That Mata needs timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. One-point game. That's well, T.J. Thompson just advancing the ball up the floor. It's like Xavier wasn't ready for him. And behind the arc, just elevating and letting his teammates know, hey, we're, we're going to be in this game comfortably from downtown T.J. Thompson. 9-0 run for the Colonials to get back within one, 60 to 59, 617 left in this game. And the Thompson's quite a basketball playing family. We've seen Landy Thompson, his younger brother, match up against George Washington earlier this year. TJ won the battle, but Landy just a freshman 
at Mount St. Mary's, not too far from GW, also an excellent player. And TJ Thompson, 16 points today to lead George Washington, five assists as well. Another change of defense, back to the 1-3-1, really disrupting the rhythm of Xavier. They've turned it over a number of times against the different defenses. Miles skip pass to Jackson, drains it. Jackson continuing to get big minutes when called upon. Xavier by three, 5.55 left. Crowd wanted some defense, and they got it. Stolen by West. Remember, Xavier went to overtime against Duquesne just Wednesday night. Back to man-to-man -to -man now, another different defense. This guy, David West, hasn't gotten as many touches as he would prefer. West, foul, and he hits it. David West, 18 points. Xavier takes a five-point lead. Outstanding play. West manufacturing his own point, driving left, using the pump fake and then finishing. Again, the all-around skills and ability of David West. They need him right now. The score is getting close, and he answered. Sato has 20. David West has 19 as the 82% free throw shooter knocks it down and makes it a six point lead. They want to go to Monroe, he's just defended so tightly that now it's Sato defending him, taking him out. Williams, oh, oh, oh baby, was that sweet with the left hand, Omar Williams. And he took it right at West. George Washington hanging in. Good defense by Monroe getting after it. Crowd is stunned here. They're not used to this. Miles walked. Dave, this is one of the sweet plays of the afternoon. Look at him with his left hand, Omar Williams up, under, and finishing at a critical time. Carl Hobbs calls him one of the top 20 players in the country. Don't know about that, but it was a huge recruit for him to nab, and Williams has played well today in the spotlight. Mensa Bonsu with the offensive foul. That foul occurred because Omar Williams didn't wait for Mensa Bonsu's screen though, so execution down the home stretch will be critical for GW. Get in here and steal one. Keith Jackson sits. See the play call for Xavier as they hold up the big card so that all of their guys can see what's next. Pretty innovative and a blocking foul called on TJ Thompson. That's his third. So four different guys with three fouls for George Washington, but nobody with four fouls. Both teams in the bonus right now, shooting the one and one. With the next Xavier foul, GW will be in the double bonus. Tim, Diedrich Finn misses that shot, hasn't played that well offensively, just two points, but he has seven assists. It's a great feel for the game, but these are the big moments now. This is execution time for GW and Xavier. A home stretch. Monroe on the move. No basket. A foul on Xavier underneath. A foul on Sato. I didn't do it. The fourth foul on Sato, Chalmers also has four. Yeah, a little bit of a touch foul over the back by Romain Sato, referees on top of it. Chris Monroe trying to get into the action, get into the lane, that's what he does so well. And even if it wasn't a foul, Romain Sato's got to understand that if you reach over, if it gives the appearance of a foul, the referees will call it. Well, foul shooting becoming critical. These are big free throws for both teams. Gonna be a lot of them down the home stretch. Who's gonna knock them down? 
Normally solid at 71%. Four out of six today. Xavier, 65. George Washington, 62. We're back after this. And we're back at the Centos Center. The Canon Business Solutions game story. 359 left. Xavier leading it just 65 to 62. GW going for a big upset here of the number 13 team in the country. Xavier shooting it well at 47%. They have out rebounded George Washington by seven. Free throw shooting. Neither team particularly strong. Sato with 20 points for Xavier. And David West has 19 right behind him. Chalmers has 15, but Sato has four fouls. And so does Chalmers. Nobody with four fouls on the GW side, Tim. And uh, what do you look for right now offensively if you're Xavier? Well, obviously, you're thinking about your go-to guy, David West, but you just want, really want to play good, solid basketball and let it come to you. you got, GW's done such a good job of shaking up their defenses and disrupting the rhythm of Xavier, and now they're playing man-to-man. -man. Let's see if they try to get West to touch. Miles finds Sato. Great. West being fronted and they stole it. Great defensive effort again by GW. Mike Hall with the steal. This is what you wanted if you're Carl Hobbs. Be within three points with about 3.30 remaining and have a chance here on the road at Xavier. The go-to guy, Chris Monroe, feed off him. Thompson, that would have tied it. Rebounded by West. Oh, that was a good look. That could have tied it. Chalmers can afford to take his time. Xavier calls time. Xavier on top, 65-62 over George Washington. 3.08 left in the second half. And here is the U.S. Airways out-of-town scoreboard. Dayton holds on to beat Bob Hill and Fordham today. 69-64 up the road at UD. And here's a doozy, Duquesne and LaSalle tied at 64 in the second half. Some very good games today. St. Bonaventure Temple coming up after this one at 4 o'clock. Temple riding four straight wins, struggled early in the year and coming on strong down the stretch. St. Joe's 9-0 at home this year. They host Richmond at 7 o'clock. And that is the U.S. Airways out-of-town scoreboard here in the Atlantic 10. We have scores of interest. Final score, Dayton 69. And this one has been a doozy today. A lot of lead changes, especially in the first half. Xavier has held on to a narrow lead throughout much of the second half. Trying to duck in on the weak side, David West. Against the double team, hits it. 21 for West. What you love about West, he not only makes shots, he makes big shots. That time right through the double team. Preseason, first team All-American. Xavier by five. For Sean. Blocking foul. Called on Finn. Xavier foul, number 12, that's Deeper Finn. They got, Xavier did a good job taking GW out of their offense. Finn right there. And the call. It's a tough call for the official. Let's see if Finn gets in there. That's a hard call. And there wasn't all that much contact to for Sean at the free throw line. He's shooting two. Well, 45% free throw shooter this year, not his strength. More of a rebounder and a slasher. GW has really got to help himself here at the free throw line. Two out of five from the line today. Tamal for Sean. Cuts the lead to four. GW riding the third longest winning streak in the country right now. 12 games. They needed overtime in their last game against Duquesne to extend it. They won a one-point game at Dayton just about a week ago and a steal for GW. 13th turnover of the half for Xavier. We're going to be hearing about that in practice from Coach Mata. 17 overall. Monroe hits it, a three-pointer, and that makes it a one-point game. Monroe wakes up just at the right time, 14 for George Washington. 
Chalmers made a huge shot against Duquesne the other night. Great defense by Monroe getting a five second count. Wow, digging in. Uh, Monroe leading this team on both ends of the floor right now. 12 this half, only two in the first half. Monroe is clicking. Doing it on the defensive end with the five second count and just prior to that knocking down the three pointer. Chris Monroe been doing it his entire career. What a big win this could be if GW can take it. Good, he used the ball fake. Got the defense off, created space and knocked it down. And with that three point bucket, Chris Monroe becomes the fourth all-time leading scorer in the A-10. Active winning streaks, Kentucky with 17. Xavier third right now. 12 straight wins. And that is on the line here with 148 left. 67-66. Xavier leads it. We are at the Cintas Center in Cincinnati. Dave Popkin, Tim Capstraw, Atlantic 10 basketball. George Washington trying to steal a big one on the road. Diedrich Finn is fouled, pushed down after the steal. And it should be a one and one situation. Well, execution so critical down the stretch here at important times. And Mensa Bonsu couldn't hold on to it. Active Diedrich Finn getting on the floor. Mensa Bonsu with four personal fouls. It does send Diedrich Finn to the line. A 67% free throw shooter. Two out of three today from the line. One and one. Couldn't get it to fall. Crucial in a one point game. Big possession right now. Try to go to their main man, Chris Monroe. Try to feed off him. If not, Thompson has also been hot. For Sean. Hits it, and he's fouled. And GW takes the lead with 117 left. Tamal Forshawn, the sophomore out of Willingboro, New Jersey. A huge play. Look at him one-on-one -on -one at the top of the key, taking it just like he did in the prior possession. Right down, and this time finishing. Watch the reaction right here. Chris Monroe loving it. Seeing his sophomore, Tamal Forshawn. We talk so much about the freshmen. How about the sophomores they got? This guy, Tamal Forshawn and TJ Thompson. Youth is everywhere at GW. Can't complete the three-point play, but an offensive rebound by Pops. George Washington with the basketball up one, 109 left. Big defensive stop now for Xavier. They got to stop and then retrieve the rebound. One minute remaining. Shot clock at 15. TJ Thompson. Rebounded by West. Xavier looking to run. Chalmers. Jackson wide open. Xavier retakes the lead, 69-68. Keith Jackson, 34 seconds left. Two second differential in the shot and game clock. George Washington needs time. Wow, that guy Keith Jackson with a huge basket. Keith Jackson's provided energy and, and really done a good job all afternoon. That time left wide open, little defensive confusion. Of Jackson, biggest defensive play of the sequence of the game, and Jackson left open, and he answered. Nobody within 15 feet of him. Right. And Jackson has seven, none bigger than that one. Xavier retakes the lead. Both of these teams went to overtime in their last game. George Washington lost at St. Bonaventure on Wednesday by five, and Xavier needed overtime to beat Duquesne by two on Wednesday night. Well, this has been quite a game and a lot at stake here for Xavier. Not only the 12 game winning streak, but uh, they're only up by a game over Dayton in the A-10 West, trying for the, the top seed there. Also, 
uh, Xavier's national ranking at stake right here. And our win streak and just a lot of, uh, yeah, national attention on this game, that's for sure. Reset the lineups for you in the game reset as well. Colonials do not have a timeout. Both teams will now be in the double bonus. Musketeers have one full 130 and the possession arrow in favor of Xavier. Xavier breaks their huddle with Jackson, Finn, Sato, West, and Chalmers. Williams nearly lost it. Monroe, Thompson, Mensa Bonsu, and Mike Hall for GW. Two second differential on the shot and game clock. 20 seconds left in the game. GW down one. We're out for Monroe. Monroe. GW retakes the lead with 10.6 seconds left. That Mata calls time with 7.6 left, giving Xavier a chance to set up one more shot. What a clutch shot for Chris Monroe. Now 16 points, 14 of them in the second half. Little clear out here for Chris Monroe. <laughs> Drives it to his right, creates some space. And that's the type of play Monroe's made forever, but what a big shot for Chris Monroe. Huh. That one hit every portion of the rim. <laughs> Look at the reaction. Hey, when you play against Xavier, a nationally ranked team, for a lot of the teams that play against them, hey, this is almost like, uh, you know, almost a championship game. It's that type of atmosphere and that type of feeling for GW right now. No doubt. Now Xavier has 7.6 seconds left. What do you think they're drawing up? Well, probably going to try to get it to their, their go-to guy, David West, just like Chris, Chris Monroe's the main man for GW on their end. you got to think that David West, they're going to at least try to get him. But GW's done a very good job in their ability to front. And with 7.6 remaining, Dave, oftentimes it's hard to get it into the post, and you have to rely on the creativity of your guards. Expect, anticipate. Finn or Chalmers to drive the ball, see if they draw any attention, and then make a decision. There just might not be enough time to get a David West to touch in the post. Xavier with Chalmers, West, Miles, Finn, and Sato. 7.6 seconds left. Chalmers trying to get it in. Does so to Sato. David West tied up. Loose ball. Chalmers, one second left. Tipped by West. That won't go. That will not go. It doesn't count. It does not count. And GW wins it here on the road, 70 to 69. They'll probably go to the monitor, but a huge upset here as George Washington staves off the home team, Xavier. Three or four different chances for the Musketeers within seven seconds, but it looked like that one came after the buzzer. We'll get another look at it. Let's watch this possession right now, going into David West, and let's see, keep an eye on the clock and the last shot. Second tip by Miles, very close. Very close there, partner. They gotta look at the, at the monitor. Miles had a tip in at the buzzer in their last game against Duquesne to send it to overtime. This tip would win it, and they're going to the monitor to decide the game. If it's good, Xavier wins it. If it's not good, GW wins it. And there are about 100 people around that scorer's table. One more look. See if we can see the clock. No. Sato and Miles with their hand on it. The official said no at first. Let's take another look, partner. The clock going down. See who gets a hand on it as well. Boy, oh boy, that's about as close as it gets. Wow. One of the GW guys had his hand on it as well. That's right at the buzzer. Boy, partner. That's tough. The official still huddling. Kenneth Clark Jr., Eric Anderson, Ron Tyberski. Partner, that's about as close as it gets. I'm trying to look at the clock and the tip at the same time. You got to see when the ball was on his hand. Exactly. Let's see it here, in back, going backwards. Let's see it tip, touch. Hey, hey, tipped. Ooh. 
I think is that out of his hand? I don't know. Xavier wins. Xavier wins. They count it. I hear performance of the regular season when he went 47 and 18 against Dayton, leading his team against George Washington, remains Sato, finds West, 2,000 career points, and Xavier had finished with 23. Monroe. Final two were big ones, as you'll see. Chris Monroe drives his pull-up J at 16. GW by one, bidding for the upset, waning seconds. Lionel Chalmers gonna try to save his team. Chalmers puts it up. No, tip by West, no, tip up, it goes. But it was too late. At least that's what the Colonials thought at first. The officials, they can use the monitor in this situation. They go over, they take another look. And you know what? For all the criticism that officials have gotten this year, they got this one right. One tenth of a second left on the clock. West got that big paw on it and tipped it in. And Xavier gets the win by one, much to the chagrin. GW fought their hearts out. Xavier wins at 71 to 70. They are 13 and 1 in 8 10 play. They've got St. Joseph's coming up. West, the first player since Rafe LaFrance in 98 at 2,000 career points.